Hello, my name is Miss Emily Smith. I am the music teacher here at Colts Neck High School. I teach a variety of classes here. I do the band class, chorus, pop music, music keyboarding, and music theory classes. After school, I also direct a variety of ensembles such as the marching band, jazz band, concert choir, pit orchestra, and I direct the vocals for the spring musical. So there are a whole bunch of ways to get involved in music at Colts Neck. So whatever your child is interested in, uh, there's a place for them or a class for them or an ensemble. Um, so we would love to keep building the music program we've built up these past couple of years, which has been fantastic. So um, really excited to see how this year goes for all of us. Um, I figured I'll just go class by class and put the timestamps of each course so you can find the place that pertains to you. So the first class I want to talk about is the chorus class. Chorus is a really fun class to teach and this year it does look a little bit differently but we're doing a lot of the same things. So um, every day we work on our vocal technique through our warm-ups um, except now the students will be muted on their computers. Um, we will sometimes have students show and tell or uh, demonstrate the thing that we're working on just so we can hear each other and I can help and give more feedback that way. We're also gonna be working on a couple projects. Uh, some of those are gonna be collaborative projects that uh, they will collaborate virtually through um, programs like GarageBand. Uh, there's a website called Soundtrap that we're gonna be using. Once we get closer to concert season, my only request for the choir is that we have black binders so that we can match in the concert. However, uh, having a concert is still up in the air. We might, again, do something virtual. In the spring of last year, we actually did a, a virtual performance on the day of our concert, uh, the day it was supposed to be scheduled. So um, there's a lot of options and there's a lot of flexibility. So I think uh, there's just a ton that we can do to make it a great experience for them. The choir also is going to have an after school portion at some point. It usually starts up around November. So we'll have to see what our guidelines are around then. But uh, if your child knows of somebody else that wanted to do chorus, couldn't fit in their schedule, um, we usually will fit them in in those after school rehearsals. So more information about that will come a little bit later. Um, but that is the gist of choir. Again, uh, the concert attendance is a really big grade for them, but that's again going to look a little bit different this year. So um, I will communicate all those rules as they come. And yep, that's, that's that class. Next up is pop music. The pop music class has two sections this year. And that is also just a really fun class to teach. The course is really a history of popular music. So we start all the way in the 1800s and then jump ahead a little bit and focus most of our time from early 1900s to today. And actually the pop music class is a half year course. So um, people have the option if they wanna do pop music one and pop music two, some people will just do two. Uh, but most people end up there the whole year. So uh, Pop Music 1, we end around like the 1960s, we get to the Beatles or so, and then Pop Music 2, we start there and go on to today. So that class is uh, a lot of times a discussion-based class. Um, I like to just pick their brains about why they like certain genres of music, uh, what they think the themes and trends of music are today, and uh, yeah, so as a result, we talk a lot about things happening today, comparing it to our curriculum and making those connections uh, together through that class. Um, as far as their requirements for that class, I generally just require if they have somewhere to take their notes. I know, of course, now that we're virtual, they could just take notes in a Google Doc, something along those lines. Um, they might find they want a little bit less screen time or they just want to focus on the lecture on the screen and write in a notebook, a uh, notebook binder, whichever is totally fine. So. Um, I like to tell them at the, <laughs> the first day of school that they're going to hear so much music this year. Some of it they might love, some of it they will not love. You know, there's some, uh, just a huge variety of things that they're going to hear. So um, there will also be times I'll often say like, yo, ask your mom and dad if they know this song. Or like, what was their experience with this big event that happened um, throughout history, you know? So uh, yeah, that's that class. It's really fun. Um, and again, if there's any questions about anything about that class, please feel free to email me. Next up, 
in order is the keyboard class and the music theory class. So the keyboard class is more aimed at beginners. Um, however, we do have a keyboard one and a keyboard two. So there are a couple students who already took keyboarding with me. They're coming back in keyboard two. There are some other students that are coming into keyboard one a little bit more advanced. So they'll be pushed ahead with the keyboard two students. Um, that class, again, it's fantastic because you can come in however you are and you'll be able to be pushed at your own pace. So for the most part, the class is usually on the same page, literally and figuratively, um, but that's flexible. So in the past, we had done uh, weekly assessments. We would pick a tune that we're working on in our book that right now I'm scanning for everybody in Google Classroom and work on it throughout the week. I gave you comments throughout the week. I would hover around the room, but in this case, I'll just have individuals unmute themselves so I can hear what they're doing and see what they're doing. And that will be the bigger way that we assess throughout the year is usually like the end of the week. They'll have to play something for me. In this case, they might record it and submit it to me so that I can hear them that way. Um, the music theory course is more notation based, more analysis based as far as music literacy and again, just music notation. So the students will learn uh, why certain things sound the way that they do. Why are these rules uh, set there? Who made those rules? And, you know, um, just kind of deconstructing what we know of music. So um, that's also a super interesting class. Keyboard one, two, and theory are all in the same room at the same time. And now they're in the their own uh, same virtual room. And that actually works out pretty well because um, everybody's gonna be playing piano, everybody's gonna be learning how to read music, um, but people will be able to be pushed based on their own level, which is really fantastic. So that class, as far as supplies, we have ordered a bunch of new pianos and piano stands and chords and all that. So we should be set for the hybrid situation. For right now, there are only a handful of individuals that don't have a piano at home. Um, I don't have any concrete answers about our solutions for that. We have a couple ways that we could go about it. Um, for right now, a lot of students are using like a, a virtual piano website and so far it's been working okay. Um, it's possible maybe like on a textbook drop off day or pick up rather, uh, we could pick up pianos and all that. But for right now we're doing okay and I will try and send out updates as we get them as I hear new things. Next up would be the band class. So the band class is period seven for our cycle and the class right now is working on some marching band stuff. The goal is that hopefully by next year, the marching band and the class will be the same. Um, that is the case in every other school in the district. Cold Snack, that was never um, enforced and we've been slowly leaning that way. So as of right now, if your child is in the band class, that doesn't mean that they have to be in the marching band. However, they're gonna be playing some of the same music. And uh, as a result, it might actually be really great to have them in the band. You know, the marching band right now is um, our only ensemble that is meeting in person to play outside in this beautiful weather. So um, it's a great way to collaborate with each other and, you know, for them to meet their peers in person. Um, it's just a really great opportunity that, uh, you know, if they already love to play their instrument, if they already signed up for band, they would love marching band. Our schedule is also a little bit less demanding this year because we are not currently going to away games. We're only playing at three home games. So if you have any questions about marching band, we would love to get your child involved. As far as the class, uh, very similar to the chorus class, one of their biggest grades is attending and performing at our concerts. Those concerts are most likely going to look different this year, whether that means they're live streamed, whether that means it's pre-recorded and combined together over GarageBand or something like that. Um, a lot of that is gonna be kind of flexible. So my perspective, at least right now for that class, is we're gonna do some projects all playing oriented. They're gonna be playing every single day. And when they play, for the most part, they'll be muted. But uh, we're just gonna talk through some like self-assessment tools, you know, ways that they can advocate for themselves, um, while also matching that with having individuals unmute so I can give the immediate feedback that they're used to in the band class. 
So um, as far as other assessments, again, I said projects. Uh, we do scale quizzes on like a bi-weekly, three-week process, uh, which they play every day. And then one day they just have to send me a recording for a grade. There's also going to be some playing tests. So, um, you know, if the, if the chunk of music we're working on that week, uh, if they need any help, we will work on it, work on it. And then at the end of the week, they would have to turn a recording in for a grade. So that is the band class. Um, it's a really great group of people and it's been really fun to learn this new way of band together. Um, and those are the classes. So if you have any questions about any ensembles, any of the classes, if you need to get in touch with me, again, my email is esmith at frhsd.com. And I really look forward to getting to know your children this year. I, I know these are crazy times, but so far it's just been so lovely to see them all and interact even virtually. Um, yeah, so I'm really excited. Um, it was nice to virtually meet you and have a great rest of your night. Thank you so much.